Oh, g'day everyone. Greg here from Fish Bay Films, and welcome back to the BNSF Urban Subdivision. Well, not actually the subdivision, the, uh, the subdivision workshops. Well, I know it's been a long time as usual, and I finally got a break for two days from Airbnb guests because they share their spaces down here, and I don't come down when I have guests downstairs. It's all locked off, and my office is downstairs, so uh, there you go. But anyway, I finally got two days off, so we're finally going to repower. If you haven't seen the video, the old Atlas Dash 8 that uh, shite itself, burned out. Well, it wasn't actually burned out, it's polling. I think it's polling. It's um, when it gets hot or a little bit warm, it shorts out. So we're going to pull it apart and we've got a new motor for it. We finally managed to get one original motor. One of these. Now they're as rare as rocket horse shit. And there's not many of them left. And of course, what we're also going to do, just briefly today, is show you how I'm repairing my other two Dash 8s, uh, which are my first original DCC locomotives from Atlas. These originally had the QSI decoders in them, but these are, these are 20 years old, nearly 20 years old. So this is a new mode. You can see it's a silver cam. We'll do a close up of this. I'll put a couple of quick uh, shorts up about this one. So that one's next to get done. But the cool thing is, actually not that one's gonna be next. The, the one next will be this one that I've already got. 882, we'll do a close up of that. So this is 882, and I can't remember the number of the other one I got, were the first two DCC locomotives I bought, Atlas Silver Series. Fast forward 15 years, and I buy another one, 881. So it's going to be really cool to have 881 and 882 running on a train. So that's why I put the new motor in this one. I will be putting the new motor in this one. And I'll do the modifications on the other one. Oh, where are we? On 882. This old girl's done some miles. You can see it's got the old Tsunami Dakota, the original Tsunami Dakota. So this one, unfortunately, will have to be completely pulled apart down to bare bones so I can get to the the gearboxes and um, put that new motor in, or new style of motor in with hex drives, which I don't really like. I really like the tail shafts. I think they're a much better idea. But like everything else, they're more expensive and more fiddly, and we can't have that, can we? No, we've got to go cheap and cheerful. Mind you, Kato and the have been doing hex drives for years, so, I don't know, anyway. All right, enough of that. Let's get into this and get this loco pulled apart and remoted and let's see what happens. So in this video we will be replacing the original Atlas motor with the same model. These are very hard to get and I was lucky to get this one. After removing the couple of boxes, carefully pry the body shell off the chassis. I'm hoping I can remove the motor without having to take the decoder completely out. So after unsoldering the wires, I'll lift the decoder and that should give me enough room. Carefully remove the fuel tank shells. Now they slide out from each side and take note of which side they go on because they are not interchangeable. Next step, unscrew the motor. These screws were quite tight so be careful you don't damage the screws. The next thing was to separate the tail shaft from the yoke coming out of the motor. A small screwdriver and gently lever it out and that should come apart. Now carefully slide the motor out and luckily there was just enough room without having to unsolder any of the decoder wires, apart from the motor of course. Nice. The old motor going there, you can see it's drawing almost half an amp. That's 450 milliamps there. And I can feel it, it's polling, it's really rough. Uh, and it's starting to get warm actually. Oh, look at that, it's dropped down to... Now it's running good. Now see, that's what happens. Oh, there we go, back up to half a milliamp again. Yeah, it's the old girl, she's knackered. Right, so the new one we're looking at, 150 milliamps, that's a bit better. 
Now carefully attach the tail shaft onto the new motor, aligning the spigots from the ball to each other, they just snap into place. Well, I didn't catch that on video, but I managed to get uh, pliers in here and hold the male end of the tail shaft with the spline and somehow line it up, keep twiddling this end and lined it up. So there you go. All I have to do now is uh, slide this shaft on, which is easy, and we are good to go. Let's see if I can do it with my fingers. Got to make sure we get the. Oops. I can just turn the motor there. I think that's right. If I can push that. Yes! There we go. Now a little bit of plastic compatible oil on our uni. Rollers there, whoops, it's probably a bit too much. Anyway, we'll wipe that off. Right, I've soldered the uh, motor wires on. Put there, put the neutral there. The board is still, I haven't uh, I actually cut grooves out of there so it actually slips into the top of the motor uh, brackets, which was something uh, pretty groovy there, but anyway, rather new screws, and that does clip in. But we're just going to give it a, uh, a run to make sure that all's good and um, we'll see what happens. Whoa! Okay. That's positive. So that's a win. Before we reassemble this, we've put captain tape around the wires here to keep everything neat before we put the body shell on. But with these Atlas units and with a lot of the newer ones too today, they have uh, copper tabs or brass tabs that the some of the body light functions rub on. So when you put the body shell on, little uh, tabs come down and touch these wipers here. So it's a very good idea to give them a clean with some you know it's going to be inox, and what this does, just like your track, is not only clean them. Oh, look at that! They're coming up nice and shiny there now, and it also protects them from oxidation because that's what we need to do. Sometimes, on if you've got these Atlas Silver Series, if the ditch lights stop working, this is normally the problem. Sometimes if you tap the body shell, it's enough to get them going again. But if you've got the body shell off for some reason, it's a very good idea to give them a coat of inox. Got to be pretty delicate with these though. There we go.
good so far. Okay, we put the fuel tanks back on. What I've done, I've written in the fuel tank when I put the new motor in. So I'll see how long this one lasts. This one hasn't done that long. The uh, original hasn't done a lot of miles at all. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. And putting the KDs back on. Now what I do with the KDs, all of my locomotives have short shank couplers to get the uh, couplers closer to the body. Uh, I got the odd person saying my locos look good. They look really close together. That's because I use short shank couplers. These are short shank whisker couplers because they're the scale KDs. And also, pimp your KDs, I cut the air hose off level with the front of the coupler so that way it doesn't foul under snow plows and stuff. And uh, it looks much better. Now you could say, just cut the airline off. The trouble when you cut the airline off is that there's nothing hanging between the cars. Uh, so for me, I think this looks a little bit better than having air hoses is dangling they're not connected it's one of those things we have to compromise with anyway but we'll we'll chuck this in and we'll take it up the layout and uh, give it a run in well, well i think that's a success so we'll take it up the layout now and we'll run it in for about an hour or so backwards and forwards up the helix and down nice and gently to bed the brushes in and uh then we'll put it on a train and we'll we'll see how it goes so let's uh, let's try that
I do need to brighten that headlight. This is a uh, Tsunami 2 in this loco, so I can go and adjust the brightness of all the different individual outputs, so I need to do that. But I should do that after this. Does run very nice, like the uh, like it did previously. Right, well, there you go. Now, I lied, we're not going to run it with a train today because it's, it's hot. We've had a heat wave here in Brisbane uh, many, many days, 36, 37, and still being over 30 degrees Celsius at night time. So uh, it's been shocking. So uh, I don't want to be in the shed for too much longer. It's about 32 today. So I don't want to run the risk of uh, getting this overheated running a train with it today. So. Uh, I have a friend coming down, a uh, good friend of mine, James, coming down. We're going to run some trains on, on next week. So we'll uh, run this one on a train after it's running. We'll run it in for a bit more today uh, when it gets a bit cool. And it'll, we'll put it on a train for this operating session that we're having in uh, about a week's time. So that'll be coming up in a couple of weeks. So, anyway, so thank you for that. The other Dash 8s will be continued to be worked on when I get time. And I'll be back on the layout hopefully within you know, a month or so. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you back at the Birdwood site very, very soon. Thanks for watching, my dad. Bye-bye. Hooroo. -bye.